Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Christian Miller, and today I'm going to be talking about the process of winemaking. Uh, I think the process is pretty important because it's a very popular drink around the world. The Vatican City is number one in drinking wine, according to businessinsider.com. Uh, they drink about 73 liters per capita annually, as opposed to the U.S. who comes in 53rd and only drinks one liter per year. Um, <coughs> The process of making wine has remained relatively the same since 900 BC, where it was first made in China through fermenting grapes with rice and honey. Uh, the process of drinking wine isn't too complicated, but it's something that requires a lot of attention to detail. Uh, this detail is really focused on the grapes. Uh, without good grapes, you can't have good wine. Uh, most grapes are grown in California, Italy, Portugal, Spain, and France. Uh, they're generally harvested around late August to early October. And most wineries use uh, hand picking of the grapes where the big ones use machine because it's a lot cheaper. Uh, then after the wines are, after the grapes are picked, we move on to the processing of wine. Uh, once the grapes are shipped off to a winery where they are first separated on a conveyor belt that shakes in order to find the most uh, bruised and damaged grapes. And they take those out and throw those away. After they have done a quality check on the grapes, they then begin to divide them. And they're dumped into a large container with a rotating corkscrew type apparatus that pulls the vines away from the grapes. Uh, the grapes then are falling through this machine into a barrel but beneath it, and the vines are shot out on the other end. The vines are usually just thrown away or used as compost, uh, and then the grapes are tossed into what is known as a juicer or a crusher, where they are smashed into small pieces and the juice is extracted from them. With red wine, they include the seeds and the skin and the pulp, and with white wine, they only like to use the juice. Uh, after the juicing process is done, the juice is then moved to a fermentation room uh, where it's placed into large stainless steel vats and uh, yeast is added. Uh, the process of adding yeast to a sugar is called fermentation. And the yeast actually eats the sugar and turns it into CO2 and alcohol. Uh, this process usually lasts about five to seven days. After this process is done, there is another process of taking the skin off the grapes. <clears throat> and for white grapes, this usually is a day after fermentation has started. For red grapes, it can be up to two months. Uh, once the grapes are fully firm, uh, fermented and uh, de-skinned, they are then sent to a aging process and a filtration process. They first filter the juice through a series of pressure filters. And again, it's another box with multiple screens ranging from coarse to fine. And they're blasted through this to remove any particles of solid matter or any impurities. And then they're placed in large barrels to be aged for up to two to three years. And most of the time these barrels are oak, uh, but now they're using more and more different kinds of wood such as cherry or chestnut. Uh, the reason they use oak is because it allows a decent amount of air to get in to the barrels during the aging process, which lets the wine pick up a nice uh, oaky flavor and mellows out the acidity of it. Uh, after these are placed in barrels and are aged, they're then opened up and moved to the bottling facility where they're pouring wine in these bottles. And the bottle is special because it needs to be a darker color so it's not affected by UV rays which will eventually spoil the wine. Once the wine's placed in the bottles, a cork is put in it and a label is tossed on it and it's ready to use. And that's how it gets to the table. Thank you for watching.